Hey there kids, welcome to another math video. This is for Eureka Math Grade 5. We're in Module 4 and this is for the Lesson 4 homework page. Uh, as you can see at the bottom of the page, we are learning how to use tape diagrams to model fractions as division. <coughs> Excuse me, oh man, coughing already. That's not a good sign. Um, we're modeling fractions as division. We're understanding how fractions are division. Those were, that's the objective from previous couple of lessons. We're using a check to kind of confirm everything. Again, watch the problem set video. If you don't know how to do this, don't just try it without watching the problem set. I explain everything really clearly with lots of examples in the problem set for this lesson. So your homework should be done and you're just checking now to confirm that yes, you really do know what you're doing. So let's jump right in. Draw a tape diagram to solve. Express your answer as a fraction. Show the addition sentence to support your answer. The first one is done for you. So you're gonna take your one, that's gonna be the whole each time. The divisor is gonna be the number of parts that you're putting into your whole, whatever the whole is. Okay, so you're gonna label the whole and you're gonna create the parts with the divisor and then you're going to simply set it up as, this is the answer, as simple as that is, and as complicated as all this Common Core stuff makes it, the understanding is, hey, I can take a number of any size and break it into any number of pieces. I can take the number of units and say, well, if this is four, then how many is one? I can figure it out and one would be one fourth. So you're just proving it. So let's get into it here for B. All right, so four divided by five, very simply, and yes, you can use this as your division line. I always do, four fifths. So we're gonna take our tape diagram, which you will learn to love this year, let's hope, and the whole that you're dividing is four. So I try to make these special little, uh, little brackets on top to show the whole, but how many parts it's being divided, in, divided into is your divisor. Try your best to fit five sections, not five lines, but five sections into your tape. So four fifths, we know that's the answer. We see that this is the whole, we see that these are the parts. So what is all this unit form? This is what you're going to be kind of follow the pattern, follow the pattern, look for the divisor. So the divisor here is five. And all these pieces make the whole. That's your, again, compare the places, the places of the number to try to understand the concept. And we wanna figure out what one unit is, <laughs> unit. And so that's gonna be what we have here. That's why we're trying to recreate it with our picture. And so one unit is really four fifths. I don't wanna creep into my other territory and I still have more work to do. I need to set this up with long division, which you can do here, four divided by five. So what happens when I have a number that is not divisible? Well, we're not gonna annex a decimal and zeros for this one because we're still really just interested in the fraction. So it's not divisible any times. So what happens is I get zero and then I have a remainder of four. So I can make my fraction as four fifths and I can do my check, which hopefully you did already. And when you check, you multiply your quotient by your divisor. So it's five times four fifths. Hopefully you set that up. As you see here, we are not going to do multiplication at this point because we haven't really learned it. Technically, we haven't learned it. I know some students just blaze right in there and they're like, I know how to do it, let me do it. So whatever, you guys go ahead and knock yourselves out. But the strategy here is to do repeated addition. So I'm supposed to take my four fifths and add it five times. I can't stop you from learning. One, two, three, four, five. If that's where you are, then that's where you are. So four, eight, 12, 16, 20 fifths. And that would make the four that I started with. Remember the whole point of doing the check is to make sure you get the dividend. 
Okay, so once you have that, you're really done with this whole section. You have um, used a tape diagram to solve. You express your answer as a fraction right there. Also here, also here. I uh, showed the addition sentence to support your answer. That's where they really want you to use the addition sentence. And some people, if they're ready to multiply, again, not going to stop you, but it says to add here. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Okay, let's do another one. So 8 divided by 5, very simply 8 over 5. So what is the whole? It's 8. That number should be on top. It's in 5 parts. So how many do we have? We have this number of units equaling the total, 8. So, But I really want to know what one unit is. And so that's going to be the 8 divided by 5 again. So one unit, people will say, do I have to keep writing it? Just do it. It's not going to kill you. It's handwriting practice, if nothing else. So your answer would be to kind of straighten it out. If you leave it as 8 fifths, that's fine. But I would never leave that um, in Grown-up land, you always would convert to a mixed number. So 5 fits into 8 one whole time with 3 left over, and 5 is your denominator. So um, to do the division, 8 divided by 5, that would be your 1, and then you multiply, subtract, put your fraction remainder, there's your 1 and 3 fifths, and then you check, and you multiply your whole outside divisor times your quotient. So it's five times one and three fifths. That means I have to write one and three fifths five times. One, two, three, four, and five. Hopefully you did that too. I always try to separate the whole numbers and then the numerator. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I put that together with 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. This here is 3. And that gives me 8. And that is what I had as my dividend in the beginning. So I say, hooray. There you go. Straightening that out. And the last one, 14 thirds. It's so easy You go, okay, 14 divided by 3, 14 divided by 3. Remember, top to bottom. That's how you're going to set those up. And set up your hole in the tape diagram. What is being divided? 14. Into how many pieces? 3. So you have how many units? The divisor number equals the whole. So if I want to know what one unit is, it's 14 divided by 3. And then, more simply stated, that's going to be your 14 thirds with your long division. If you can't count that or don't know it, you can solve it because your answer is going to be right here, as we have done before. So 14 divided by 3, and then 3 fits into 14 how many times? with how many left over? And that's where you get your final answer. So if you don't know it here first, do this step first. Your check should have the outside divisor times your quotient. And we're not going to use multiplication because you don't know how yet, supposedly. And so it's going to be 4 and 2 thirds repeated three times. And 4, 8, 12 plus 2, 4, 6. This here is 2, so it's 12 plus 2, which gives you the 14 that you started with. Okay, so those are the answers to the first page. There's a lot more ahead. Like I said in the problem set video, this is a really huge lesson with lots of information in it. 
Okay, so this one has the chart with all the different things that they want you to understand. Fill in the chart, the first one's done for you. Thanks for that. The division expression is just the numbers with the sign. The fraction could be proper or improper, doesn't matter. However, if you notice that you're gonna have to know what the answer is to this in order to figure out between which two whole numbers your answer lies. If you have a fraction that is less than one, it's pretty easy because it'll be less than one, so zero and one. And then the standard algorithm is your division. So uh, three fourths would be three divided by four. And they already gave you it's between zero and one because this is not even one whole. And then it's three divided by four. Hopefully you put those in the right order. Check your work. Four does not fit into three at all any times, but there are three fourths left over. That's all that redundancy that I think is so silly in this program. Uh, then we can move on to the next one. Seven halves is again seven divided by two. So if you want to know what this is between, do the long division first. Two fits into seven three whole times for a total of six with one left over. And so if your answer is three and a half, then between which two whole numbers is that? It's between three and the next one up, that would be four, okay? Because it's three and more, but not to four. Okay, this is 81 ninetieths, or 81 divided by 90. They've got the fraction here, 81 divided by 90. How many times does 90 fit into 81? It doesn't fit in there at all because 90 is bigger than 81. So we still get our zero with 81 left over with 81 90ths as our fraction. And that is still less than one. So it's zero and one. Hopefully they didn't trick you on that one. Now the last page, I know that was kind of fast, hopefully not too fast, but the last page has a little bit of application to see if you can read and understand where the numbers go. Jackie cut a two yard spool into five equal lengths of ribbon. So what is the whole? Two. That is the whole, it's two yards. She cut it into five equal lengths. Hopefully you made five pieces in your um, tape diagram. This is a two, that's the whole, divided by the number of pieces. That's gonna give you your two-fifths. Remember, we're just connecting it to fractions as division and making a tape diagram. That's the answer, you're done. Two-fifths of a yard each. What is the length of each ribbon in yards? Two-fifths. You could label, you could count, you could check, you could prove it um, and see for yourself that that would give you two yards. What is the length of each ribbon in feet? Okay, so we have yards and we have the two yard spool. So if you wanna know about the feet, well, there are three feet in a yard. So I would start out with uh, my answer. You can, there are a couple different ways you can do it. If I have two fifths yard and I have this one, I could multiply it by three to increase the number of units by three, which is how you would get the dimensions for feet. Two, four, six would give you six fifths. Straightens that out with a division. Six divided by five is one and one fifth. And that's one way of thinking about it, but maybe that wasn't um, your natural step. Maybe you're thinking, hey, I wanna convert that right away. I don't wanna start with two yards. I'd rather start with the feet measurement, which is kind of what I would prefer. I think uh, if I was doing this as a fifth grader, I would take my two yards and I would convert it to, well, how many feet is that? And so that's gonna be the two times one yard but remember this formula? And then what is one yard in my new measurement? It's three feet. And so it's gonna be six feet. 
So the hole there would be six feet. And so it would be, uh, for the units, I would have my six feet divided by five. And you end up with the same thing. Either way. Now, you don't have to do it twice, and whoever's copying, you know, just without thinking, you probably wrote it twice. Well, that's good for you to understand it, but you can think about it in either way, one way or the other. If you did it both ways, good job. <laughs> A little extra work won't hurt you. All right, then we have Ba Ba the Black Sheep had seven pounds of wool. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How many bags full? I don't know. If he separated the wool equally into the three bags, there it is, how much wool would be in two bags? So the whole is all of this, seven LBS, seven pounds, and it's separated into three bags, seven divided by three. Seven thirds, don't you want to straighten that out? I do. And you can do long division, let's say, if you get stuck and want to know what the remainder is. Okay, I just am doing this in my head. Hopefully, you don't need this step, and you can do it in your head as well. But if you need this step, go for it. Write it out. It's what we've been doing on the previous pages. So two and one-third pounds in each bag. But that's not the answer to the final question. The final question is how many are in two bags? That's like saying, well, if I have one unit, it's this, but I need two units. So use addition because that's our strategy that we know. Combine your whole numbers, combine your numerators. They already have a common denominator. And don't forget to label four and two thirds pounds in two bags. Remember to click subscribe and come back again. Here's the last problem. An adult sweater is made from two pounds of wool. Not Baba Black Sheep's wool. Looks like it's a different question. This is three times as much wool as it takes to make a baby sweater. Okay, so two pounds is three times as much so how much wool does it take to make the baby sweater? So let's make a little tape diagram. The adult sweater is made from two pounds. Okay. But that is three times as much. Show a baby sweater. A baby sweater, if the adult is three times as much, the baby is one third of that, right? So I can take my two pounds and I can divide it by three in order to find the amount of the baby sweater. I want it in three pieces so I can figure out what one of them is. Well, one of them is gonna be two thirds because two divided by three gives you the two thirds pound. So, uh, let me see, did I answer the whole thing? An adult sweater is made from two pounds, three times as much, baby sweater, here's the, yeah, there it is, two thirds pound, and you are done. So, I hope this was helpful, and click subscribe, and come back again. We'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.